Good morning. The sun is shining behind the clouds, but it's coming through just ever so lightly. As you can see in the reflection here, the sun is present with us. The gardener. The gardener. A good gardener has a lot of love for his plants, for his crops. Just like the, the good farmer with his animals, with the cows and the sheep and the horse and the donkey. They're not just things, there's somehow, <laughs> there's some connection there. We used to even name the cows at home on the farm. We knew their names. And the name was very interesting because the name, immediately we say the cow, uh, it's the cow's name, the big twin. We had a, a cow that was called the big twin. And she was probably a twin, but I don't remember the, the twin sister and it would have been in my lifetime because the big twin lasted a long time. In fact, until the end of my time at home, before I joined, maybe a year or two before I joined the seminary, so at the end of high school. And the big twin had given us a calf every year. A wonderful cow, you know. But you'd say that at home, the big twin, everybody in the house knew the big twin because the name speaks about the reality. Look at this bird here. I often wanted to get these guys for you. Oh, she's, no, yeah, we got her. Let's watch her for a second. There she goes under. <laughs> now she'll be under for I don't know how long. I'm not sure if it's a she or a he, but uh, uh, she'll come out again. So she's down. They can go very deep. I think 20, 30 meters under the water. They don't have that here. Was, oh, there's another one over there. Maybe that was her. She was up again over there about 10 yards further on. So putting names on things is very important because it helps us to communicate. Oh, there she is again. That's the same one for sure. And now she's gone down under again. And sometimes it's to stay down a while or maybe it's hard to find where they come up because they can go a stretch under the water. But now it's very calm here and we can keep an eye on her for a second just for the fun. There she is, look over here. So there she's getting breakfast there. So I waited a bit this morning for the sunrise because the cloud is pretty intense and this way we get a chance to see the light. We get a chance to see the light. Sometimes there's a time for things to happen. And there's a time in our lives and a time for the plants, there's a time for the, for the animals, there, the reproduction cycles, there's the fruit cycle. There's a time. There's a time for spring. And there was a time for each of us. There was a time for, for Moses. And a time for Abraham and a time for Isaac. And these are all little threads of today's readings. Gardeners and time and giving time, things happening at a time. And it's all filled with love. filled with love and this love sometimes can be demanding like parents with children can have a healthy serious expectation and love also is capable of giving a reprimand sometimes we prefer different ways we prefer our own little slaveries Somehow we get comfortable in our slaveries and we lose our, our freedom. We give in to certain habits of life that um, are really detrimental to us and hurt our life.
like I'm walking along here at the edge, okay? So, what is it down there? Probably about five feet, six feet. And the water here isn't that deep, it's only a foot or two. So if I just walked over here, the camera would get damaged and you'd get shocked. And then uh, I'd get wet. Hopefully I wouldn't get more seriously hurt. But then I'd be out in the, in the cold, wet. I'd have to go back and change. Falling over the edge. And I could walk along the edge a lot just for, I don't know, the, the itch of that. And sometimes we do that in our lives, our behavior is like that. And God says, no, we need to get you out of Egypt. This position where you have your own little plate of food every day, but you're slaves. This is not the place for you. So I'm going to call somebody to lead that effort, and his name is Moses. And this is a mysterious encounter of God with Moses. Really a mysterious encounter. There's a burning bush. We've got lots of burning bushes here up in Mount Arbel. They're burning with color. All these gorse bushes. I think they're gorse. But this bush was actually burning with flames and it never, it didn't die out. It kept burning and it was still there. It's a very powerful image also of God's presence among us. Mount Sinai. Where Moses had that very, very special experience. God wants to send Moses on a mission. We encounter God, we discover our identity, we discover our purpose in life. In the relationship with God is the anchoring of our identity. And there also is our freedom to do good no matter what the difficulties are. We have a path to, to redemption, a path to, to freedom, a path to really be who we are. We're the pandemic, you know, when it says trying to connect, I have to go back. So a lot of people fell off. I hope you can come back. Sorry about that. And God wants to know and Moses wants to know God's name because it's a very serious mission he's given and he asks for God to tell him his name, to tell him his identity so that Moses can grasp God. But we can have a name for a little stone, we can have a name for this kind of plant with this flower, we can have a name for this kind of tree and we grasp it in deeply in its essence. But a name for God you know, we're small creatures. And a name for the God of the universe, the creator, the Holy Trinity. The whole path of growth into the intimacy with God, to know his name. You know, when you're walking down the street and you don't know the names of all the people, you don't know their intimacy, you don't know their, their mystery. When people tell you their name, it's like they're revealing who they are to you. What a powerful, powerful gift. Because it brings us into relationship with the other. We're standing before them, we're looking into their eyes, we know their name. And especially, you know, trespassers. Sometimes we have trespassers here on the property. That's a normal human thing. People who come in and you don't know who they are and why they're there. And if you ask their name, and especially if they're really trespassing, if they're not with, a, with like the, a, a clean, open intention, um, 
they don't want to say their name because it gives you a handle on them. We can't grasp them. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little aggressive and you say, well, I take out my camera and take a photograph. That makes people very nervous because they don't want to be under your control. They don't want to, to be grasped by you, to be held by you. The, the, the human person escapes that. It's, knowing each other has to be a free gift, it has to be a gift in trust. It's like entrusting yourself to the other when you say the name. And God says his name to, to Moses, but it's a name that's mysteriously said. It's also very concretely said, and you could say it doesn't say anything, but it says a lot. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of your fathers. I have been with them. I have helped them in their lives. I have brought them up. I'm the one who gave Isaac to Abraham a child in his old age. What an extraordinary mystery of God, that he is with us. And then this becomes Emmanuel, always with us. God who is with us. I am who I am. This our self-revelation of God to, to Moses the light is beginning to shine more powerfully. I am who I am. Very profound, deep words that have been the object of consideration and reflection by the greatest minds, philosophers, theologians, saints, scholars, linguists. So much has been thought about that very phrase. I remember when we were studying theology, Exodus 3.15 was etched in our brain. There's so much light, there's so much to chew on. And sometimes that is such a challenge, that particular word, so. But then it's also the word that, while it's so, so challenging metaphysically and theologically, this word is matched with another one. You see, there are two banisters on this stairs going down. It's a bit broken, okay? I didn't break it, sir. Don't blame me. So, there are two banisters going down, and one of the banisters going down into the mystery of God, or going up into the mystery of God, is I am who I am. But the other one is, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and I am close to you. I love you. I am the one who produced, who, who made it possible for you to be, to exist to thrive, to come into existence, Isaac, because I gave you to Abraham and Sarah. I am your God, the Lord your God. Afterwards, we will have, after the exodus is complete, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery. Let's swing forward to the gospel reading. The gospel reading is very tough words. And sometimes patients need a tough word from their doctor. Children need a tough word from their parents. Students need a tough word from their teacher. You need to get a little shake up there and get going, get working. And they're very tough words in the gospel today. There's a very important word that uh, it's important for everybody, but especially I would say for for uh, people that are a little hypersensitive when something bad happens to blame God for it and to see it as a punishment. Hey, look at this. This is uh, there's a big pipe going into that um, square farm there down deeper like about four or five feet down below it's bringing in water from the property in there and now it's pouring out over the top you 
you see we're getting close to the top marker over there on the wall so it has to be less than two feet now below the top level and then Jesus is teaching that when a tragedy happens it's not necessarily punishment from God on the other hand there's a great sensitivity that evil happens because of our sins which is also true because no sin can do good to us it looks like it can do good to us and that's the temptation but every sin leaves a lot of damage and not just scar tissue down the road but it it really hurts now. It hurts our ability to love. It makes us more selfish, more like an ingrown toenail. It, it, it's, it's very bad for us. Sin is against our true freedom and it is, enslaves us. And that's the freedom we need. But there's a gardener who comes when the fig tree isn't giving fruit and works the, works the trees. Over here in our garden, some of the trees needed quite a bit of work, actually. And uh, we have nice fruit trees there. I should take over there with you just as we finish up, just to show you our lemon tree, because it's loaded with lemons. And we've taken off a lot of the tree already, and it's already blooming for the next season. So maybe I'm a confessing fault here in terms of lacking good husbandry for the tree. But the flowers are out already there. I saw them the other day. Let me show you that. And in the gospel, uh, the owner says, let's cut down this tree. And there's a gardener. And this gardener says, no, no, no. Let me give it another year. I'll hoe around it. I'll fertilize it. I'll, I'll do something to give it another chance. And this gardener is Jesus. It's a time of grace, a time of mercy, a time to a second chance. Thanks be to God, so many people gave us second chances in many ways and many things. Look at all these lemons. They're a little small. Maybe that's because we need to prune it more. But look at, we have all these lemons. And look at this here. And these lemons are delicious. I try to have one in water every day. I get, I put half in one glass of water and half in another glass of water later. And there are the, the new flowers coming. And then the, we have taken off most of the bigger ones, which you have a, a bigger one here. Look at this, and we've taken off dozens and dozens of these. We have given them presents to people. Look inside, look at the amount of, of lemons. Some of them are terribly small. I just have my, my finger here. But then these other ones, there are some nice big ones there. Like this one in here is pretty big. The lemon has very sharp thorns which I hadn't thought of before. These are mostly small. Yeah, here's the bigger one. And then all the flowers coming here, so there's another crop on the way. There's also a big one up here. Right there, at the back there. So the gardener wants to come and to work the tree. And actually this tree is, is very interesting. This tree was a split one, it had four pieces coming out, you see? And actually I was the one who cut them off here. Somebody told me how to do it. And I cut these three off less than a year ago. And then uh, our gardener Sedan put in this stake here, this metal stake, and just to sustain it. And it has grown very well. That one weak stem, which wasn't the strongest one, but it had the best chance of growing straight up. Uh, it has really strengthened in the course of the year. And there are a lot of flowers coming as well here for the next one. It didn't have as many fruit. It looks like a different type of lemon. Although some of them have gone yellow as well. So I need to learn about these kind of trees. We didn't have lemon trees in Ireland. The weather wouldn't allow that. So people, let's turn to our gardener as he works our tree to bear more fruit, to come out of our, our selfishness, our, our little slaveries. That's why we're doing fasting and praying 
and working on charity and acts of kindness and goodness. That the sun will come out again in our lives and shine brightly and we continue to grow and flourish and bear much fruit. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you. See you later. Have a blessed Sunday. A wonderful new week coming. The first day of the week, the Lord rose from the dead. And there we have Pentecost and a new Easter, a new beginning. God bless you. See you later, alligators. See the lights coming again. <laughs>